and welcome back and happy holidays everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I noticed that Redfin posted their real estate market predictions and housing market forecast for 2023. They're actually forecasting that home prices are gonna decrease in 2023, and that'd be the first time in a decade. On top of that, they're forecasting that home sales are gonna be decreasing big time in 2023. So there's that and a lot more in their housing market forecast here. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive right in. This is their housing market predictions through 2023 here. It says we expect home sales to sink to their lowest levels in more than a decade in 2023 as high mortgage rates keep housing costs up and prevent people from moving. High homeowner equity and a resilient job market will stave off a wave of foreclosures here. Mortgage rates will take center stage in 2023 with high rates likely to make it the slowest housing market a year since 2011. So we're seeing here because we have this affordability issue in the US and of course because rates uh, still remain very much elevated compared to the past couple of years here, uh, we're going to have a very slow housing market, the slowest since 2011. So here's their first housing market prediction for 2023. Home sales will fall to its lowest levels since 2011 with a slow recovery in the second half of the year. We expect about 16% fewer existing home sales in 2023 compared to 2022. And by the way, um, based on data right now, we're on forecast, we're on, we're on track uh, to have about 5 million home sales, existing home sales in 2022. In 2023, they're expecting 16% fewer uh, in, in, compared to 2022. So they're expecting only 4.3 million existing home sales in 2023 and people will move only if they need to. And they cite this decrease of 16% on a year of year basis for home sales is mostly due to affordability challenges uh, that we're seeing right now. So at 4.3 million, this is uh, so much lower compared to 2021. In 2021, there's approximately 6.1 million home sales. And again, this year we're expecting around 5 million uh, closed home sales for the entire year of 2022. Only 4.3 million are forecasted in 2023. And this is actually um, pretty remarkable because at 4.3 million, uh, have a look at this. Here's uh, annualized home sales in November. So annualized home sales in November, which, which basically means uh, based on the current sales pace in November, you analyze that number you would have approximately a 4.09 million home sales for the next 12 months. If you had the same sales pace this November, you'd have approximately 4.09 at year end or over the next 12 months. So at the analyzed pace uh, right now, at least for the end of November, at 4.09 million, excluding the onset of COVID, which is May 2020, that's the lowest levels since November 2010. So in other words, based on the current sales pace right now, it makes sense we're going to see a huge decrease in home sales potentially in 2023. You also can see that when looking at pending home sales, because look at this, uh, pending home sales right now, uh, this is based on data from the National Association of Realtors, uh, just like this other Excel spreadsheet as well. Uh, so based on pending home sales right now, the index is at 73.9. That's a 38% decrease compared to one year ago. And by my analysis, this 38% decrease on a year-over-year -year basis in pending home sales is the biggest year-over-year -year decline on record. On top of that, the current levels of pending home sales, at least as of the end of November, is an all-time record low as far back as the National Association of Realtors data goes, going back to January of 2001. And because pending home sales are at the lowest levels on record, uh, this should equate to lower closed home sales in the next coming months. And therefore, if that continues, it makes sense to see this huge decrease of closed home sales of 4.3 million that Redfin's forecasting. And again, if we actually do have 4.3 million existing home sales in 2023, this would be the fewest home sales since any year going back to 2011. They also say that existing home sales will likely fall 31% year over year in the first quarter, followed by smaller annual declines in second and the third quarters. To me, this makes sense because um, in the first quarter of 2022, we saw a high amount of closed home sales. 
and therefore it seems uh, likely we're gonna see huge decreases in the first quarter of 2023. Of course, as you guys all know, in the second half of 2022, we saw huge decreases in closed home sales. Therefore, it makes sense we're gonna see smaller declines in the second and third quarters of 2023. And therefore, because we saw huge decreases in closed home sales in the fourth quarter, it also makes sense here saying that existing home sales will be flat from one year ago in the fourth quarter. It also says sales will start slowly recovering as rates fall from their peak, but they'll post year over year declines for most of the year. It also says here, while buyers don't want to buy, sellers do not want to sell. And that's kind of what we're seeing right now because we're seeing a huge decrease of pending home sales and of course, close home sales, but also a huge decrease of new listings. So we're seeing this uh, kind of tug and pull amongst home buyers and home sellers right now. Redfin also notes we have this lock-in effect amongst current homeowners who have very low mortgage rates and therefore they're deciding not to sell their houses. And therefore, new listings will continue to decline year over year during the first half of 2023. And have a look at this because here's a new article I found that was just published, when was this published? On uh, December 27th. And this is from the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas, a report that was just published a few days ago here. And they actually talk about um, current homeowners, what they have for their rates on their mortgage rates. So have a look at this. The average rate for all outstanding mortgages for people who own houses right now, uh, the rate declined steadily from 4.4% in July 2019 to 3.7% in March 2022. Uh, that's the, uh, the average rate for people who have mortgages on their houses or loans on their houses. Uh, decreased at 3.7% as of March 2022. However, that rate was increasing slightly in recent months, but it remained below 3.8% in September, suggesting that the average borrower is paying a very low mortgage rate. So as of the end of September, the average rate for people who have loans in their houses is just below 3.8%. And by the way, of course, average rates in 2020 and 2021 was around 3%. And right now, the time of this video, which is the 30th of December, rates are around 6.6%, around 6.5% uh, for people looking to get a new loan. So averages right now for people who do have loans right now is very, very low at 3.8%, at least as of the end of September here. They also note here that in September 2022, only 31% of outstanding mortgages in other words, for people who have loans in their houses right now, uh, only 31% had a rate exceeding 4%. This means approximately, what, 70% have rates at or below 4%. And because approximately 70% of all people have loans on their houses right now have rates at or below 4%, this is one main reason why we're seeing a huge decrease of new listings. People deciding not to sell their houses given the fact they have historically low rates. And going back to Redfin's housing market forecast here, they also uh, kind of cite another plausible scenario as well regarding uh, home sales, or at least existing home sales. So here's another scenario. This is where uh, home sales are just over 4.5 million. It says here, if inflation consistently slows faster than expected, allowing the Fed to slow its uh, rate hikes, of course, uh, this could lead to a quick mortgage rate drop. In other words, uh, for uh, mortgage rates to decrease at a faster than expected pace here. But if inflation persists though, sales could drop by up to 27% year over year. So as you can see here, their predictions here are based on uh, mortgage rates, which is more or less tied to inflation due to the Fed uh, increasing the federal funds rate to combat inflation. So depending on what happens there, this is really gonna be impacting our housing market here. And this of course is due to the fact that if inflation still remains very high, the Fed's gonna continue raising rates, which of course is gonna increase mortgage rates and impact our housing market. And speaking of rates, that leads me to prediction number two here. Mortgage rates will decline in 2023, ending the year below 6%. It says here they're forecasting that um, rates are going to end the year at 5.8%, but the average is actually going to be about 6.1% for the entire year of 2023. If mortgage rates actually do decrease to 5.8% uh, by the end of next year, this is how this will impact home buyers uh, next year. It says here for rates decreasing from about 6.5%, to 5.8%, that would save a average home buyer looking to buy a $400,000 house about $150 on their monthly housing payment. In other words, 
uh, for rates to decrease from 6.5% down to 5.8% uh, for people looking to buy a $400,000 house, your monthly housing payment would be $150 less. Another way to see that is for a home buyer on a $2,500 per month um, budget uh, can afford a $383,750 home with a 6.5% rate. Uh, more or less, $384,000 is what you could afford with a $2,500 monthly budget at 6.5%. But at a 5.8% rate, that same buyer can afford a $406,000 home. However, even though home buyers would have more purchasing power if rates were to decrease of 5.8%, uh, with a 3% rate, which was of course common in 2020 and 2021, uh, that same buyer could afford a $517,000 house. So in other words, at a 3% rate, if someone wants a $2,500 per month housing budget, at 3% rate, you can afford to buy a $517,000 house. So a $517,000 home uh, versus at 6.5%, you only can afford approximately a $384,000 home. And again, at a 5.8% rate, you can afford to buy a $406,000 home. It also says here the Fed's series of interest rate hikes uh, should cause inflation to continue slowing in 2023 which is likely to bring mortgage rates down. How quickly inflation and rates come down though depends on a number of different factors, uh, including the resilience of the jobs market. So for example, if inflation cools faster than expected and the job market um, moderates faster than expected as well, rates may decline sooner. But if inflation proves to be stubborn and still remains very, very high, rates are more likely to stay elevated. Riffin also talks about if we see a rise of unemployment, then lenders are actually going to be tightening their lending standards. House hunters uh, may need a higher credit score or a lower debt to income ratio in order to qualify for a loan. So this is saying here that uh, lending standards may tighten in 2023 if unemployment increases. So here's an actual look at uh, credit availability for mortgages according to the Mortgage Bankers Association. So I, I just wanna point this out because lending standards right now are still very, very tight. The current levels right now that we have in the US, by the way, the lower the number, the more uh, a tight uh, credit worthiness is. In other words, the harder it is to get a loan. The lower the number, the harder it is to get a loan, is what I meant to say. So current levels right now are more or less on par with 2013. The tightest uh, lending standards since 2013. Also have a look at this. This is credit availability going back to July of 2004. Obviously in 2005 through 2007, we had very loose uh, uh, lending standards across the United States. And that's why uh, credit availability absolutely uh, skyrocketed. But look at right now. Again, the lowest levels since approximately 2013 and well below levels back in 2004 all the way until 2007 and eight. Therefore, if lending standards get even tighter than we have right now, we're not gonna be anywhere close to levels we saw uh, during the Great Recession. And that leads me to the prediction number three regarding home prices. So home prices will post their first year of year decline in a decade, but the US will avoid a wave of foreclosures here. So here's our forecast for home prices in 2023. It says here that home prices are gonna decline by 4% in 2023, the first annual drop since 2012. They say here prices would fall even more if we had more houses listed for sale. They also expect new listings to continue to decrease in 2023, which is keeping total inventory levels uh, below historical lows. And of course, that prevents from prices from absolutely plummeting, uh, which is more or less what I've been saying on the channel for quite some time, right? Because we're seeing this huge decrease of new listings and this increase of housing inventory is due to a decrease of home buying demand. If we had an environment where new listings were absolutely skyrocketing, then we'd be seeing plummeting home values, but in fact, we're not seeing that just yet. So according to Redfin, home prices will start their decline in the first quarter, falling by roughly 2% from a year ago, making the first year-over-year -year price drop since the beginning of 2012. That's pretty crazy, right? On a yearly basis, home prices have not declined since 2012. Absolutely wild. Uh, home sale prices will likely fall by about 5% year over year in the second and third quarters of 2023, then ease to a 3% drop by the end of the year. 
Now here's a key point right here because it says here with even with home prices falling by 4% on a year-over-year -year basis, homes will be much less affordable in 2023 than they were before uh, pre-COVID era. The typical uh, home buyer's monthly payment will be about 63% higher in 2023 than it was in 2019. Uh, that's saying a lot because uh, average monthly housing payments increasing by 63% in 2023 compared to 2019. That's saying a lot because they're forecasting that home values or home prices are going to decline by 4% next year. Now, here's the big issue here in our housing market because this actually comes to fruition here uh, where the average monthly housing payment increases 63% in 2023 compared to 2019. Then wages will only go up roughly 27% over that same time frame, 2019 to 2023. Uh, this is why we have a lack of housing affordability in the US. We can't have um, average monthly housing payments increase by 63% in uh, what, four years, and wages only increase by 27%. In regards to foreclosures in 2023, here's what Redfin has to say. Prices remain elevated above pre-pandemic levels, also means a wave of foreclosures next year is highly unlikely. They basically say here that homeowners who purchased a house at least three years ago have high amounts of equity in their houses, and also they have historically low rates. They also say for people who bought a house uh, more recently, uh, they likely put a sizable down payment, and therefore they have some equity uh, to land on. I would say, uh, that's a true in general, but when looking at uh, people who bought houses basically in mid 2022 and they bought a house, let's say with a VA loan or an FHA loan, VA loan, you have a 0% down payment, FHA loan, you have a 3.5% down payment. So the people at greatest risk of being underwater than mortgages are people who have an FHA loan or a VA loan putting a very low amount uh, down in order to buy houses. Riffin also notes the job market still remains very resilient. Uh, even if there's a recession, economists expect a mild one with a small increase of unemployment. So it's unlikely that many homeowners will be behind on their mortgage payments. Redfin is also predicting in 2023 that the Midwest and the Northeast will hold up as the best overall markets uh, next year. Housing markets in relatively affordable markets like the Midwest and the Central Coast regions will hold up relatively well in 2023, even if the US housing market cools off even more. It says here these areas tend to be more stable than more expensive coastal regions, and they also did not heat up as much uh, during the pandemic like uh, you know Austin, Texas, uh, Salt Lake City, Sacramento, uh, Boise, Idaho, et cetera, et cetera. So here are the top markets here, or the top 10 markets that they're forecasting are likely to hold up best in 2023. Number one is actually in Lake County, Illinois, followed by Chicago, Milwaukee, Albany, New York, as well as Baltimore, Maryland. And here's the other a top 10 here as well. In contrast though, they expect home prices to decrease the most in pandemic hotspots, uh, such as Austin, Texas, Boise, Idaho, and Phoenix, Arizona. In regards to Redfin's housing market forecast, prediction number five here, uh, they expect US asking rents to post a small year-over-year -year decline by mid-2023. And because of that, some landlords may offer concessions such as a free month's rent or free parking, for example. And they say here rent price declines is likely due to increase of housing supply of rentals. It says multifamily construction is at a 50 year high, which means hundreds of thousands of new rental units will be available next year. Therefore, as supply increases, rents should decrease in 2023. And that leads me to Redfin's prediction number six here. Builders were focused on building multifamily rentals versus single family units. I actually agree with them regarding this. It says builders will back off on the most part from building new single family houses. Uh, this is exactly what I've been saying for about what, six months, ever since more or less March of 2022. Uh, builders are pivoting away from building single family houses and moving towards building multifamily for rent. But because construction of single family houses absolutely skyrocketed from mid 2020 through the early parts of 2022, uh, this means that builders will have to offload the houses they have on hand without adding more to limit their financial losses. 
They also provide their housing market forecast regarding investor activity here. So prediction number seven here says that real estate investors will purchase about 25% fewer houses in 2023 compared to 2022. But if inflation slows and the Fed eases on rate hikes as expected, investors will likely start buying more houses in the second half of 2023, taking advantage of slightly lower home prices and potentially lower mortgage rates as well. And Redfin's prediction number 10 here is uh, sad, but probably true. It says rising disaster insurance costs will make extremely climate risky homes even more expensive. Uh, some Americans will be priced out of climate risky areas like beachfront Florida and the hills of California because of ballooning insurance costs. We expect disaster insurance rates to continue increasing next year and beyond. Uh, rendering housing in some areas much more expensive. We are seeing that in California because in the uh, foothills of California, which is all seen in more wildfire zoned areas, uh, home insurance is absolutely going through the roof uh, because a lot of insurers don't want to uh, take up huge losses like uh, some have over the past few years here. It says the increasing frequency and intensity of natural disasters has prompted some insurers to stop providing coverage uh, in risky areas altogether and others to raise rates for flood and fire insurance. In Florida, for example, uh, property insurance premiums increased 33% year-over-year in 2022, and on top of that, they're expected to rise even further after Hurricane Ian. In California, for example, many private insurers have stopped covering high fire risk homes, which means many homeowners and buyers must use a last resort plan or spend two to three times more on home insurance premiums. Additionally, disaster insurance is now a prerequisite for a mortgage in more risky areas. As this becomes harder to come by, those areas are likely to become more concentrated with affluent all-cash buyers. And with that said, please comment below your biggest takeaways from today's video. Also, if you guys got any value this video whatsoever, then please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate that. Of course, I appreciate you. Happy New Year, and I'll see you on the next video.